Our next speaker is Janice Marion Rye Lamare, uh, the daughter of D attorney J. Marion Rye, who Troy just spoke about. Two months ago, Discovering UK staff was able to get in touch with Mrs. Lamare in Oregon with the help of the Little Historical, Little Tokyo Historical Society. Together they worked like a mystery to chase Janice down, and they <laughs> found her. Uh, she now lives in Oregon, and uh, as Troy said, when she was eight years old, she sat in the Supreme Court and watched her father uh, defend the case for the Issei doctors and won. Mrs. Lamoury's father was an attorney for 57 years, from 1913 to 1970. Not only did he successfully argue for the establishment of the first Infica Hospital, but he continued to act as an advocate and friend to Issei and Nisei, helping people secure their assets before being incarcerated during the war years, and after as people returned to LA to get reestablished. Mr. Wright's family is pleased that the Japanese American National Museum is preserving the record of his achievements in the pursuit of justice. We are honored today that Janice Lamarie and her family are able to join us for this program. Would you please welcome Janice Marion Wright Lamarie? I have uh, no fact to tell because, uh, as Dr. Kaji said, I was almost nine at the time. <laughs> but we were allowed, with my mother and my uh, sister, to go with my father to the Supreme Court. So I'll just tell of what happened at, at, that, at that time. It was early Los Angeles, of course, and uh, we were out on the platform of the train and also out on the platform was your grandfather and several of the other doctors. There were maybe 10 Japanese gentlemen all dressed up. My father was dressed up, he was six feet tall and wore a hat, so he was really tall. And <clears throat> uh, then some of our family was there wishing him good luck, of course. And uh, just as the train was coming, my little grandmother, who was probably five feet tall, but very powerful woman, came over to the group where my father was talking to the Japanese, and she said to him, Marion, I want you always to keep warm, don't catch a cold, and wear black shoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, all the Japanese and the family, we all laughed, it was such a joke. So finally the train came, we got on the train, <clears throat> and all right, before very long, my father was there talking to some man cordially. And uh, so we found out later that it was Mr. Webb, who was the attorney for the other side. He was Attorney General of California. And here was my father talking to the <laughs> enemy. <laughs> so every time he would walk by, and I should tell the young people here that to get to Washington then it took five days on the train. So we would see Mr. Webb go by and my sister and I would hide our heads and then we'd glare. <laughs> so we were going to Washington <clears throat> for the first time to see the sights. We saw the, the very new Lincoln Memorial, which we hadn't even heard of. My sister and I hadn't heard of, but it was just like a white wedding cake. It was so new and the marble was so white and sparkly. And at the top, around the outside, they have the estates listed. Every state is uh, engraved in the top of the Lincoln Memorial. And my, we made my mother and father walk all the way around until we found California. We didn't want to be left out on the Lincoln Memorial. The day of the trial, my father went on ahead and my sister and my mother and I followed. At that time, there was no Supreme Court building. It was built later on, and uh, the Supreme Court was held in the Capitol. So we went to the Capitol, uh, went up to the door that we were supposed to enter, and there stood a very tall usher in black with white gloves, and he opened the large door for us. We went into this very large room. <clears throat> it was 
quite dark, very cold. We went in expecting to see a crowd. There wasn't a soul in there. There was only seats, uh, row upon row. So the usher told us exactly where to sit. And we were behind a fence. Then there was an area of desks. And beyond that was another fence. And then where the justices were going to, going to sit. So we sat there for a few minutes. And then my sister and I got out our little books that we thought we could write in. And the usher came, Noah. That wasn't allowed. You couldn't write anything. So we sat there a little while longer, waiting for other people. Not a soul entered. Finally, in came Mr. Webb and my father and sat down at these desks that were in front of us. We waited a while, not a word, complete silence. And in a little while, in came the procession of the justices. And it was very impressive. And it was especially impressive because the uh, uh, Chief Justice at that time, uh, William Howard Taft, weighed 350 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we, uh, we, as children, didn't know how many hours had been spent on the appeals, the pleadings, the evidence, the court opinions, and uh, all the depositions that had occurred before. And we were just thought it would all be coming right out there, and they would be arguing. We were looking for a good argument between these two lawyers. But they came in, the justices uh, asked a few questions. Of course, we all stood up, and we sat down. The justices asked a few questions of Attorney Webb. And then um, another just, justice asked a question of my father. And we just thought then he was going to make a great oration, but all he did was answer the question. So uh, finally, they called again on Attorney Webb. And before long, they said, well, that'll be fine, Mr. Webb. And pretty soon in came the usher and ushered us out. And my sister, <laughs> we kind of looked at my father when we met him outside and said, who won? <laughs> And he said, well, we won't know till November, or till a few months later, who won. But um, as I looked down, I thought to myself, he's wearing his black shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so you can be sure that the case of the Japanese before the Supreme Court was tried by a lawyer obeying his mother. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my story. <laughs>